Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Here's all what you will need to make these flavorful chocolate chip cookies. In this bowl here, I have one and two thirds cup of flour along with one teaspoon of baking soda. In this cup here, I have half, half a cup of white sugar, two thirds cup of brown sugar. You can use light or dark, it really doesn't matter. One stick of butter, I have two halves, but that equals to one. Milk chocolate chips, that's what I'll be using today. One egg, cookie nip, that's an extract. That will be a game changer for your cookies, I'm telling you guys. And vanilla flavoring, which is extract. And here are my measurements of what I had to use to get this stuff into the bowl, and also what I'll be using to mix the stuff. First, we're going to start by melting this butter. I want it all, I want it all. Make sure you get all your butter off of the packaging. One more, one more. Okay. Okay, when you're melting your butter, <clears throat> make sure that you don't let it cook too much. You just wanna melt the butter because if you let it cook too much, it'll develop like a, uh, a nutty flavor and you'll end up with brown butter. So just enough until it melts. I mean, brown butter is good, but you know, just not for this recipe right here. So I'm gonna let that melt and I'll be back with you guys when it's time to combine it all together. Okay, people, we're back with our melted butter and this is what it should look like. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add that to the sugars to get that all mixed up. All right. Okay. So we're gonna mix that all together. You can also use a whisk to do this, but I prefer using this little spatula thingy or um, a wooden spoon that always works the best. smells amazing mmm the smell of sugar and butter <laughs> I think the brown sugar makes it smell even better okay so we got that all mixed up so we're gonna let this cool for a second before we add the uh, the one egg because if we don't we'll have scrambled sweet eggs and we don't want that so we'll give that a second before we add the egg Maybe let it rest about a minute or two. Let those flavors come together. And we'll be back. Okay, so it's time to add the egg, the sugar, the butter mixture has cooled down completely. And I just place this over here. Smash that yolk a bit and just stir it all together. Make sure you get the bottom just in case any sugar has settled. 
You want to make sure everything is mixed up together. So this can make the perfect cookie. Okay, a couple more stirs. And we should be good to go. And ready to add the flavor in. Mm, looks about right to me. Okay, now first I'm going to add my vanilla, regular vanilla extract, a teaspoon of that, add some butter on there, that's okay, okay, a teaspoon of vanilla, guys make sure you follow these steps exact so the cookie can be perfect bacon is like a science if you do something out of order or your measurements are off you won't have the same results and sometimes you know you see people make things and you'll go and try and you know replicate that same recipe and you'll ask why did mine come out that same way because possibly you didn't follow, you know, the correct order. But here is uh, some cookie nip. This stuff is really good. I found these people on uh, Instagram. Check these guys out. This is the, the uh, exact name, uh, cookie nip. It's really good. So I'm going to be adding a half a teaspoon of cookie nip flavoring to uh, the one teaspoon of um, vanilla inside of the butter and sugar and egg mixture. Okay. All right, so we set that to the side and we'll mix all of this together. I'm telling you, if you make this batter, this batter for uh, people, they'll be asking you what is in these cookies. That cookie nip is a definite game changer. Okay. Sure that's mixed all through. Okay, that should be good. Perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is incorporate the uh, dry ingredients, which is one and two thirds cup of flour and one teaspoon of baking soda. I like to add it to the wet mixture instead of adding the wet mixture to the dry mixture. It seems to come out better to me as far as mixing wise. And you can add it all at once. You don't have to do it in shifts. And just stir that all the way through and mix it all together. Just kind of fold it, you know, and then it'll start to come together. Right here, it seems like it never will, but trust me, it will. <laughs> Just fold and mash. See that? Oh. Make sure you get everything. Okay. 
Oops, sorry for the noise. But this is planet Earth. Where we are humans. <laughs> okay, so that looks about right to me. Now, we are going to add in, sorry, one cup of milk chocolate chips. I usually use uh, the semi-sweet uh, regular chocolate chips, but for some reason I find that in some cookie mixtures, milk chocolate tastes a little better. You know, you use whatever you like. Dark chocolate, classic chocolate, milk chocolate. It's all up to you. Right, whoa, one got away. And there we have it. Now we just fold these pieces in and let the dough chill for about an hour or two before you bake a cookie. Let the butters and sugar solidify and all the flavors marry together and you'll have the perfect cookie dough. Trust me. I am a home cook. So, for all you real bakers out there, <laughs> If I'm doing something wrong, or if you got any tips or pointers, you know, please feel free to write me in the comments to let me know. And don't forget to like this video, share, and subscribe. Okay, so this completes the mixture of our cookie dough. Just want to make sure the bottom is all mixed through. Yep, all good. I don't want to over mix this either. Okay, so now I'm going to cover this bowl with some uh, saran wrap and let this hang out in the fridge for a couple of hours. And I'll be back when it's time to bake a few of these. Okay guys, we're back with our chilled cookie dough. I'm going to Take the plastic cover off of it. Okay. All right, one of my uh, tips and tricks to baking these cookies are to bake them on aluminum foil. It has to be heavy duty. I don't really like using uh, cookie sheets because it seems to turn the bottom of the cookie a bit darker. So I find that aluminum foil works just perfect for me with this uh, recipe. So I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to get my man-made aluminum pan <laughs> with just aluminum foil. See, don't make fun of me, but trust me, if you try this, you'll see the difference. Now, I haven't decided on which side I'm, which size I'm going to use to uh, bake these cookies. Uh, thinking I'll go with the uh, the larger one, and I'll probably do a couple of small ones. So I'm going to scoop out the dough, and place it on this piece of foil, and get to baking. But first, you want to preheat your oven at uh, 325. So here we go, we got one, okay, we got two, try not to uh, keep them so close together so that they don't um, touch each other while baking. And this recipe yields about uh, a dozen cookies, maybe a little more, depending on which size uh, cookie cutter you use. OK, 
Okay, I'll do six big ones and then I'll do three small ones. The small ones I'm going to have to uh, take out first because they're not going to cook at the same time as the larger ones because of the size. So here we go with that one. Okay, that looks a bit... I have to redo this one. Alright, here we go. Boom. Alright, that should come out nice. Okay, so I should have room for three small ones. Let's see. Doing pretty good with the dough. I'm gonna do these small ones just so you can see how they look. I usually prefer doing this size, but today I'm going to go for a bigger cookie for this video. You could pretty much use these cookies to make ice cream sandwiches, you know, make it fun for the children. Or just to simply eat. But if you bake these four people outside of your home, they're going to love you forever. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'm going to place this in the oven at 325 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. But my trick to baking cookies is that I don't bake it all the way until they're overly brown. I like to let it get a little light, then I'll turn it so that it can cook evenly depending on your oven. And then I'll take it out and let the heat from the cookie still being hot cook the cookie the rest of the way because I don't like to over bake them to where it's completely crispy I like for the ed edges to be uh, crispy and the insides to be you know chewy okay with that being said I'm going to place these in the oven and we'll begin our baking process okay it's time to put these bad boys in the oven Okay, here we go. And off to the hot house. Okay, the cookies are done. And the three small ones that were at the bottom. I took them out a bit early to let them start to cool because I didn't want them to get overcooked in the oven with these bigger ones. So now I'm going to place these onto the cookie sheet or the cooling rack and let them cool and then we'll plate these bad boys up with a nice cold glass of milk. Okay guys here are the cookies on the cooling rack. These smell so amazing. Man, I wish you guys can smell through your TVs or your phones or wherever you're watching from. <laughs> These are really amazing. Comment in the section below and let me know how you guys like your cookies, what type of cookies you like, and uh, what type of videos you'd like to see me post in the future. So I'm gonna let these cool for another few minutes and I'll plate them up and we'll get that nice cold glass of milk that I told you guys that I will have and we'll close out the video look at these these look amazing 
Oh my god. Mmm. And there's that glass of milk that I promised you guys. Alright. Okay guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope that you try this recipe. The description of the ingredients will be in the section below, in the description section. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.